Hi, I'm James Schillinglaw, and I'm here once again with Andre Girondeau, who is the Chief Operating Officer for Melia Hotels International. And we're here. We've talked to, to Andre a few times in the past year, uh, but we got some new things to chat about. And you're going to find out a lot about m m what Malia is, is doing and what's going on with all its hotels worldwide on Insider Travel Report. Uh, and now, uh, Andre, uh, as I mentioned, we, we've talked a couple of times in the past year, uh, but can you give us an update on Melia, uh, how many properties you have and where they're located, just to, to you know, give our audience a, a sense of the company right today? Uh, certainly, James. And first of all, it's great to be back and, and happy to share this uh, conversation with, with, with your audience and, and all the uh, travel community. Um, as you know, uh, Melia Hotels International is probably the 18th or 19th uh, largest hotel group worldwide. We are in uh, 44 countries. Um, so we've really focused in uh, leisure and pleasure destinations. Uh, so I think that, uh, you know, the, the latest news is once, uh, on one hand, we've, uh, we've really strengthened our position in Southeast Asia. So okay. I think it's interesting to note that uh, we have signed a, a partnership agreement with Vinpearl, one of the largest hotel groups in, in Vietnam. Uh, oh. Besides several other properties, so now we will have around 24 hotels in Vietnam. Uh, besides this relationship with Vinpearl, we're covering mostly all of the coast of Vietnam. Oh, wow. uh, so that's very interesting. Uh, at the same time, uh, in, a, in a few months, we will be opening Gran Melia Nhatran. This will be our first Gran Melia, an old villas uh, resort in, in Nhatran. Uh, you know the Cameron Yatran area, so I think we're 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 very excited about uh, what's what's happening in in Southeast Asia. Uh, you know, we recently opened uh, our property in Kosamui, uh, Melia Kosamui, who is also a, a great property. We've opened uh, Phuket Maitao, also another uh, great property. So things are developing in Southeast Asia, as we say that most of the customers concentrate eighty percent of their holidays between the Caribbean, the Mediterranean, and Southeast Asia. So we continue to strengthen the, uh, the footprint. Uh, when it comes to the Mediterranean, and I know we're going to talk about it uh, a little bit later on, maybe regarding what's, what's happening with the Balearic Islands, but uh, right. we're excited with, with the uh, future opening of uh, Villa de Blanc in Menorca, which is happening in a, in a, in a few days, actually. Uh, but I think what's very interesting is that we have just refurbished two of our uh, most interesting properties in Paris. So I think uh, Villa Marquis, that used to be uh, Villa Royal Alma, has been fully refurbished. Uh, and also the uh, uh, Melia Colbert, Notre Dame, which is a beautiful 39-room property right behind Notre Dame. So as it goes refurbishment and, and, and it's being recuperated, we will see this uh, Melia Colbert uh, coming back up. We, we have a beautiful property in the in Tuscany. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, Melia Villa Artemino, which is going to be part of our Melia collection, uh, which is a soft brand we launched uh, not too long ago. And this is where Villa Marquis, Melia Colbert, Villa Artemino will be, be a, a, a part of it. And at the same time, we just recently opened a, a great property in Frankfurt, uh, Melia Frankfurt, along inside Amsterdam and uh, Inside Luxembourg, so we've, uh, despite the, uh, the the whole COVID uh, situation, we've been able to sign and open over uh, seven thousand rooms just this 2022. So we keep busy, we keep committed, and we certainly feel that tourism uh, will always, or hopefully always, be a very strong piece of the uh, uh, economy uh, worldwide. So you really haven't stopped uh, during the pandemic. You've, you've kept on going and developing and reaching out to Southeast Asia and obviously these European properties that you have. Uh, although most of our, our viewers are very much familiar with you because of your all-inclusives in, uh, in the Caribbean, Mexico, places like that. And that's what they know the Malia brand for, although they really should know it for a lot of other hotels, as we all know. I mean, I was lucky enough to stay in, in or at least interview your general manager in, in Madrid, uh, and uh, it really is a beautiful, you have some amazing properties. And, and indeed, many of your hotels are located in your home in Spain, uh, which was the topic of an event you held in May, which unfortunately I couldn't get to. 
at one of your newest hotels, which is called Inside by Melia New York Nomad. Uh, and in fact, you are showcasing your Melia Mallorca and Tenerife hotels were highlighted during that event. Talk to us a little bit about uh, those properties. And, and also you showcased a new flight that United Airlines just put in that will take uh, Americans directly to those islands, right? Absolutely, we had we had a uh, a few events. You know, one obviously celebrating uh, summer travel to Spain and also uh, life for the arts. But essentially, is that uh, United has launched initially from June through September three frequencies a week uh, to uh, Mallorca and Tenerife. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's, I mean, it's been great so far. I think that uh, very high level of occupancy, probably fully booked on their Polaris class, on, on, on their business class. Uh, so very excited with, with the turnout and the way this is helping to position Mallorca, which I think it's one of the best kept secrets in, in, in the U.S. Uh, the Balearics in general, maybe sure. Ibiza less so, but definitely Menorca and Mallorca are two jewels in, in the Mediterranean that are worth uh, presenting to the U.S. Uh, customers. Now, uh, how many properties do you have on those islands in Mallorca and Tenerife? We, we have, well, listen, in, on the Mallorca Islands and, and Tenerife, we have over uh, 24 properties uh, combined. Wow. So, uh, you know, this is where everything started for the company 67 years ago. Uh, and and very excited how we've been either upgrading or opening new properties and and converting a number of hotels. No, that's great. And and so are is are these direct uh, flights? How I mean, they really only just started, I guess. But are they? Are you seeing more Americans coming to those islands? Well, listen, the flights are almost full. Uh, we've seen a lot of uh, Americans obviously coming into the islands. I think they have a great impression on on everything Mallorca has to offer. This is a destination where, as you know, you can spend at least a week and, and continue uh, leaving the different uh, islands of Mallorca within Mallorca because you have this cosmopolitan old town city center, you have uh, the mountain, you have different beach resorts. And then obviously this idea of then going into Ibiza and Formentera, which are very well positioned. And then, uh, and then Mallorca is very interesting. You know, we have a very strong relationship with some of our key partners, whether it's Virtuoso. Most of these properties are Melia Hotel de Mar, a Grand Melia Hotel. It's a member of leading hotels of the world. And that, that's, uh, an, adult, yeah, that's an adults only property, right? That it's, an, it's an adults only property uh, in a very special, nestled in a very special cove on the island of Mallorca. Uh, it works very well, member of leading hotels of the world. Uh, we have Mi Visa, which is more of a lifestyle hotel. But again, you decide what level of energy you want to entertain in Ibiza, and this is exactly the case. So, of well, Ibiza. In Ibiza, I hear you have to have a lot of energy. So, I guess you better. <laughs> we better I mean, Ibiza. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, we always, yeah, well, we always like to talk about the yin and the yang. So, it, it could be high energy, low energy. It's for you to choose. Ibiza has both worlds as well, and then you can go into Formentera, which also has this combination. Uh, Mi Visa, again, uh, partner with Virtuoso, partner with leading hotels of the world. So I think it's resonating with our with our U.S. customers very well. We used to have a good uh, portion of U.S. customers before, but obviously without a direct flight, it was more of a challenge to come into Barcelona, Madrid, than traveling to Mallorca. So I guess there was a demand and we're able to come to an agreement and United was was uh, clear and understanding the potential of, of uh these destinations, and as the U.S. market is preparing to come back to Europe, uh, we feel that these are key resorts to visit. Now, as this United is seasonal service, I assume, and what's the frequency? Basically, it's from, what, JFK or Newark? I can't remember. Right, it's Newark, and it's going to be three uh, three times a week. And uh, for the time being, it's going to go from uh, June through uh, September. Okay. So you got a little time left here to get over there. Sounds sounds wonderful. Uh, and of course, th- this is the the high season for you over there, uh, starting July and August. I know that. Uh, so you be, you better book now out there because uh, it, it, it Europe is booming, 
Um, you know, and as long as the flights go, which is an issue these days, uh, well, let's hope they do. I just had a flight canceled myself, and I just saw there were a lot of flights in Europe that were canceled. Uh, let's hope United can keep those three flights uh, a week uh, going to the, the islands. Uh, absolutely. So far on time and, and again, with, uh, with good results. So we think this is just the beginning of the routes opening into Mallorca. Um, we're almost certain others will follow because the offering that uh, Mallorca and the Balearic Islands have in general, I think is very important. And then we're, we're really working hand in hand with the uh, local authorities and, and the promotion department of, of uh, the Balearic Islands. So I think you're gonna hear a lot more of what's, what's happening in, in, in Mallorca. Well, I, 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 I've, always, I've always wanted to go back to the, the home ship for, for Malia in Mallorca and all those, I, well, just to figure out what's in the water there, that there's so many different uh, uh, hotel brands that have come out of that area over time. And yours is, is one of the largest, if not the largest. Uh, so I, I was very, very curious about all the hotel companies that come out of there. And, and you have some amazing properties, it sounds, especially the new ones that are coming out. Uh, and now they're spread out all across the, the world. Now, is Malia Hotels uh, International seeing kind of a full recovery to kind of pre-pandemic levels, uh, especially in terms of bookings in Spain and Europe? Uh, or or are, you, are, you, are you back now? Well, I think that, um, you know, considering Q3 or the summer season specifically, we are now at uh, probably above uh, 2019 levels of about 7 to 10 percent. OK. Uh, in most cases, we've been able to drive, you know, we've, we have a strategy of the uh, upscale premium or luxury and we've done full the company. So you have the luxury on the premium brands and some of these properties, whether are the Gran Melias, Don Pepe in Marbella, or Santi Petri, or the ones we just mentioned, obviously Barcelona with the opening of Mi Barcelona recently, you know, the properties in Madrid. So we've had a very positive pace. So yes, we are at uh, pre-COVID levels uh, for the summer season. I think mainly in the leisure segments. And uh, one very positive news that just started a few uh, less than a month ago, I think it's the rest of Europe. So when you look at uh, Milan, Rome, Madrid, London, Barcelona, uh, really driving at a very positive pace. So we're going to be, hopefully if everything goes well and nothing changes, uh, we're going to be uh, above pre uh, above 2019 levels, except for the corporate business that you know right, we have yeah. a portion yeah. of that. And this is a wait and see until September. However, MICE has, has started to pick up and companies are starting to recover the pace. So I think we just need to wait and see how inflation, energy costs, and this whole global situation might have an impact. But so far, we're very positive. Uh, we're also very positive. In Mexico, we've been pre-COVID levels since last year, right. and we've had a very positive recovery. So, so have we in the Dominican Republic. And I have to say that uh, to your comments a few minutes ago, our Paradisos resorts in the Caribbean, uh, you will see fully refurbished Paradisos Palma Real before the end of the year. Okay. So we're entering the uh, winter 22-23 season with a Paradisos Palma Real completely refurbished and, and upgraded. So we're very excited about what's happening with the Paradisos brand as well. You know, we have Paradisos Los Cabos, also a member of leading hotels of the world a high-end all-inclusive in Cabos, which has been uh, doing very well for the past uh, for the past year. Uh, so this is also an invitation to focus in properties in the Caribbean as well uh, for those who are not willing to uh, travel to Europe again and want to concentrate probably in a, in a short radius uh, holiday. No, absolutely. Well, I, with the, the Mexico and Dominican Republic, I know were booming even during the pandemic uh, because people thought that was a great place. But I understand Europe uh, is above all projections right now, despite uh, you know the increase in fares and uh, obviously some other economic uh, news that has affected all of us. Uh, people seem to be they're going to go regardless, at least for this year. Uh, we'll see what happens next year if it persists. But uh, it seems like it's all been good news so far. And of course, that's resulted in uh, massive flight issues because I don't think the airlines are ready to have everybody back. Um, and and so I, I think that we have a number of opportunities, you know, one being uh, people 
talent, uh, you know, after COVID, recovering the level of service, the level of staffing has been a challenge, I think, right. overall in the industry in general. Uh, we have our own internal talent and development strategy. So we have to say that today we're up to standards in, in most of our properties. Um, we've been focusing very, very much on, on travel with a purpose. You know, we, we know there's a, uh, some people call it uh, revenge travel, but we know there's a lot of people that want to travel no matter what uh, they need it. I think it's well-deserved. People will be traveling. But for us, it's also very important being the, uh, one of the most sustainable companies in, in the world, that we make sure we are coherent and consistent with our strategy and that we make sure that we create experiences and we bring the destination into our hotel offering and, and that we also work this destination included uh, or destination inclusive offering so we can present you know, all the magic of some of the destinations that we have, whether it's Lanzarote, whether it's Tenerife, whether it's Mallorca or or Ibiza or Formentera or Madrid, but we want to make sure that uh, we support the rationale of why reconnecting, re-engaging, uh, traveling, uh, you, you, you travel with a purpose. We've been lucky that uh, most of our, our premium uh, categories and superior rooms and suites are the, are the ones that have the most demand, that have the most open space, those self-contained resorts. So, uh, you know, we've, we've, uh, we've been performing, I think we've been learning uh, through what uh, the market was telling us in the past couple of years. So hopefully we're, we're able to put that in, in perspective. Well, it's great to, get, great to hear all that good news. And uh, congratulations on these new flights uh, by United that's going to get everybody hopefully back interested in Mallorca and Tenerife and the Balearics. Um, and also your new properties all over the place, the new, the, ones you, the new deal you have in Southeast Asia. And uh, I'm kind of excited to go see those uh, Paris properties one of these days, because uh, I, I, you know, as, as you and I both are, <laughs> to, to see them. Uh, You're now, there, welcome. You know that, James. Is there anything else you want to tell our 100,000 travel advisors out there about Malia Hotels International today and what its plans are for the future? Well, I think basically what we have mentioned, and again, very excited to uh, show the new face of our Mi Hotels, of our Grand Melia properties, I think it's important not to forget that uh, we we have, uh, I would say there's there's one area in the world that has shown a lot of interest, uh, and this is we opened Gran Melia Arusha in Tanzania uh, last year. Uh, please remember we have the uh, Melia Serengeti, which is a Melia collection property. We have Melia San Sibar, and we're now refurbishing a property in the Gorongoro. So please keep in mind that also this route of, of uh, safari and, and disconnecting in this part of the world is also one of the key services and, and, and hotels that we have to offer. But I think in general, to come and take a look at, uh, at our new web, uh, which is far more interesting in terms of uh, services and added values and, and a lot more friendly to explore. So please visit uh, milia.com and obviously uh, Melia Pro Premium, which is our travel agents and, and partners uh, loyalty program that I think there's a lot of interesting things to, to note. Absolutely. And that's good to know. So if you want to hear or learn even more about Malia, you'll go, go find out all the brands that they represent. Uh, it, it is amazing uh, how, how quickly they've grown. How many, so, so how many total hotels do you have roughly? I know it's hard to keep track. We have over 360 under operation. We'll be close to 400 with the uh, uh, 12,000 rooms, uh, close to 40 hotels that we have in the pipeline. Uh, so we're very excited, uh, very focused, but with a very clear brand strategy, we have eight hotel brands in the company. So please come and check. There's, there's one hotel for everybody. There's one brand for everyone in our portfolio, almost everywhere where we're present. Well, Andre, I want to thank you for taking the time to speak with us again. It was good to see you back in con live in person. Uh, we've done this by Zoom, and hopefully the next time we do it, we'll do it live in person again somewhere in the world uh, at a Malia property, uh, uh, either near you or maybe Africa. Who knows the way you're talking now? It's, uh, they're all over the place. Again, congratulations also on the, the, uh, the, the good business news that uh, we're hearing from you, and congratulations on these uni new United flights that are going into Mallorca, Tenerife, and the Balearics. Listen, congratulations to you, your team, and the effort you put to keep us uh, 
upfront and and I know that even through COVID you were very very active so we appreciate that I think the travel community uh, needs it so thank you as well I'm James Schellinglaw and this is Insider Travel Report